Good morning. It is 11 o'clock on Thursday morning, which means it is time for another installment of the Making the Most series from Maryland Snap Ed. So welcome. If you're joining us for the first time, we're glad you're here. If you're one of our repeat uh, visitors, we're glad to have you. Um, so I will give the intro that I always give that this is our series about um, really making the most of the foods that you have access to over the past year. Well, things have changed tremendously for many, many families, pretty much everybody, <laughs> but uh, with particular attention to our food resources um, as folks experience changes in employment, changes in their lifestyle due, due to the pandemic. So we've talked about school meals, accessing school meals. We continue to reinforce how you can, can access free school meals, how to make the most of that food once it comes into your home, as your kids are eating it for breakfast and lunch, sometimes dinner. Um, but then also you can use leftovers and recipes that they'll love. We've talked about food pantries and we'll also continue to talk about food pantries today. So resources available in, in your community or maybe they're pantry staples that you already have. They're inexpensive, they last a long time and they are a great way to start healthy, uh, you know, satisfying meals. Uh, and now we've shifted to one of my favorite ways to access food, which is gardening. So each week we've been talking about um, a little tidbit garden experiment or um, or some real you know, foundational information about growing some of your own food and then uh, how to cook with that food. So please, as always, introduce yourself in the comments um, with your county that you're joining from, if you're from in Maryland or your city and state, if you're from outside of Maryland and throughout um, the presentation, please post your comments and questions and I'll try to keep up with them uh, and, and read them to our presenters. So today we are joined by two guests. First, I'm gonna introduce Amy Callahan. Amy is our uh, nutrition educator and project leader in Baltimore County. And um, so I'd like to welcome you. She's a first time chef on Facebook Live for Maryland Snap Ed. And uh, give us the scoop on uh, school meals in Baltimore County, as well as um, any sort of highlighted resource for food access. Sure, I would love to. Um, thank you for having me today. So for Baltimore County, all students are getting breakfast and lunch at no cost. Um, curbside pickup meals are available on Monday and Wednesdays at various sites around the county. Baltimore County is a geographically big area, so if you're curious about where the closest pickup site to you is, your best bet is to check with your school. Um, and then, of course, hybrid learning has started full swing um, this week, so those in-person kiddos will be getting breakfast and lunch at school as well. For food assistance, if you're looking for food assistance um, in the Baltimore County area, the Baltimore County government has a wonderful food assistance map on their website. All you need to do is put in your address. You can actually pick how far you wanna travel, whether it's five or 10 miles to that food assistance site, and it will pre-populate all of the food assistance sites in the area uh, that are close to your home address. Great, thank you so much. We love sharing those tools. We will put the links in the chat. Um, as always, our message, if you're from anywhere in the state, is to um, look at the information on the website for your local school district or call them to get the most up-to-date information on school meals um, or um, for food assistance, for, for pantries. We're gonna put some statewide resources as well, both the Maryland Food Bank, which has a site locator that will identify pantries close to you that participate with the Maryland Food Bank. Um, there's another resource through No Kid Hungry where you can text the word food to 877-877 um, and get lo locations of both the closest school meal site as well as the closest pantry. And I believe that attempts to be inclusive of both pantries that um, partner with the Maryland Food Bank as well as other independent pantries. So if you are having trouble putting food on the table, please take advantage of these resources. That is what they are there for. There are lots of people who are experiencing hardship now that have never um, had to consider these resources before. The other reminder is that school meals are free to all students, including those that are attending in person. So if you are in person or if your students are in person, have them um, eat the school meal. And that's, that's money in your pocket that you can save for other meals. So um, thanks a lot, Amy. We're gonna be coming back to you once we start our demonstration. And I'm now going to introduce Luke Birdsong. So Luke is joining us. He's um, an AmeriCorps VISTA with the Towson Food Share, uh, which is a pantry that serves uh, campus 
uh, so our campus community members at Towson University. So he's here because he's, uh, you know, we've he's shared some of our resources um, and uh, was anxious to share what Towson's doing. And I will mention that college pantries are just a really um, uh, growing piece of our work at Maryland Snap Ed. Um, so uh, welcome, Luke. And we're going to hear about his work. And he's also going to kind of cook along with us as we make today's uh, recipe. So Luke, tell us about yourself. Tell us about food share, how you guys are operating, anything you're excited to share with our audience, um, and any information that, that any college students that might be watching might need to know. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. We're actually celebrating our five-year anniversary today at the Food Share. We started five years ago on April 8th. So we're so glad that you invited us over to celebrate today. Uh, so I am Luke Birdsong. I am the CCMA AmeriCorps VISTA member supporting the Food Security Initiative at Towson University. And in that capacity, I work at the Food Share at Towson. The Food Share at Towson is a great resource that we have for all members of the campus community, anyone with a Towson University ID is free to come and utilize the services of the food share. During the semester, the food share is open uh, during the week uh, for operating hours. So you can come whenever we're open during that time frame and come get up to 10 items. And then we also have a remote service pickup model that we operate during the semesters and then also in between the semesters. So throughout the entire year. And basically, you can just request items on a Google form at our website, which is www.towson.edu slash foodshare. Um, request your items, specify as necessary for any um, specific requests, given that we have it in stock, as well as any sort of um, dietary restrictions. And we're happy to accommodate all of those. Also, something to note for college students, due to recent legislation that has passed, uh, SNAP benefits have been expanded for college students. So anyone who is a college student who has, is eligible for federal work study or has an estimated family contribution of $0 is now eligible for SNAP benefits. Previously, you had to actually be working in a federal work study position, but now you only have to be eligible due to the pandemic. And that benefit is going to last until 30 days after the state of emergency uh, declared by the federal government for the pandemic is over. Hopefully it will last longer, but just so you have a general time frame of those benefits, that's what they are. In. Uh, for my cooking, I'll be doing a kind of college student version of our uh, recipe. So I'm very excited for that. Thank you again for having me. Yeah, so like I mentioned, we've been doing more and more work across the state with uh, college food pantries. Um, the economy has changed a lot in the past year. There have been a lot of the sort of service industry jobs that may have previously been available to students aren't available. And, uh, you know, we just don't want to ignore the fact that, that there are lots of different populations that might be struggling to put food on, on the table. One of the things that I think has been really sort of interesting for me personally, as we've thought about our work with pantries and even preparing for this presentation today, is how can we make our, our recipes not only accessible in terms of the food, but in terms of the tools that we use. And I think that, that keeping that sort of like college student modification, maybe you're in a dorm room with a hot plate in mind, um, I think it's gonna help us in our work to serve lots of populations who might not have access uh, to all sorts of cooking materials, or maybe you don't want to have to pull out every tool in the kitchen, even if you have it to, to cook with. So, uh, so Amy's going to be leading our cooking, but Luke's also going to have some some uh, sort of college style modifications. Um, so great. Well, we're going to get started with our main content. Uh, we're going to be talking about lentils today. So as we've been doing, we're going to have a little gardening experiment uh, that Amy will demonstrate then move on to our recipe. So um, today is one of those things that is really just sort of sort of like garden magic, windowsill gardening, something that gets you thinking about food uh, in terms of how it grows. It's not going to grow a crop that's going to you know, feed your family, but it's certainly, I think, for, for young kids and adults alike, creates interest in thinking about plants and including more of them in our diet. Um, and so we'll talk about lentils, the magic of, of lentils, both in the garden and in our kitchen. So Amy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, yeah. So lentils um, are a legume and they're often associated with beans and peas. And just like beans and peas, you can sprout them. So I'm going to show you an experiment that I started, which is super exciting. Okay, here's what we've got. So here's our dried lentils. You soak them overnight 
And eventually what you get is sprouted lentils. Let me try and hold it up a little closer here. So what we have here is, you know, what you're, what's going to be going to become your first leaves, your seed leaves. And then of course, what's going to become the first roots of the plant. All right. So seeds are great because they contain all the energy and nutrients a tiny baby plant needs before it begins to make its own energy. So when we eat these seeds, we also get the energy and nutrients found in the seed, which makes them a nutritious food to eat. Oops, sorry about that, guys. All right, so how can you sprout these? So we talked about soaking them overnight. Once you soak them overnight, let me pull this out of the bag so you guys can see this a little better. So once you soak them overnight, you can put them on a wet paper baggie. These are about two to three days old. So you can see they've started sprouting their first roots there. So you take your soaked lentils, you put them on a wet paper towel, and you just slide it right into a, a plastic bag and stick it someplace warm, maybe in a sunny window to let it do its magic, and it'll start to sprout. But wait, it's even easier, guys. <laughs> Here's what I did. <laughs> um, I basically just soaked my beans overnight right in this, this plastic cup. I drained the water off and then every day I would just kind of wash them off with water and that's, they did their thing right here in this cup. And you can see that they're doing marvelous. I've got lots of green sprouts there. So this is a really great activity for kids, but also for adults, because it's super fun to observe the magic of a seed as it sprouts into a plant. And if you wanted to go one step further, of course, you could plant it in soil um, and, and see what happens, see if it, see if it grows into a, uh, a bigger lentil plant. Yeah, we're used to looking at lentils and it's, it, you know, they seem about as alive as a, as a bag of pebbles, but, but it is amazing <laughs> what they have going on inside of them. So we're actually going to post a link in the chat to a lesson that we have on seeds. Um, it's called called Seed Magic that um, it leads you through a seed dissection using a bean. It's a great one to share with your kids um, and you can try this. We have a question. Can you eat the sprouted lentils? Well, that's a, I, so you really want to be careful with sprouts because of food safety issues. Sprouts have been associated with lots of foodborne illness outbreaks. So Krissa, how would you like to, <laughs> how would you like to? <laughs> I think so yet. So the thing is, is when you're sprouting it in that moist environment, it can, there can be, a, you know, a, a small chance, but one worth avoiding of there being sort of other things that like to grow in warm, moist environments. So I would say for this experiment, we're, we're talking about it from the perspective of watching it grow. And like Amy said, maybe putting it in the ground. Um, we're not like strongly advocating that you would, would then eat these. Um, but if you did then want to plant them in the ground, what you would see is vines would grow and they would grow pods and inside would be, be some little lentils, which you could plant again, or you could, you'd probably only get a handful of them. You could, you could eat them. So <laughs> great. Well, thank you for that. Um, this is a super fun experiment. If you leave them in their bag, I mean, it's amazing. These things grow. You can almost watch them grow like an inch a day. Um, so, now that we learned a little bit about lentils and the powerhouse nutrition that they carry as seeds that, um, you know, they carry all that energy and, and nutrients that, that you can then eat. Uh, let's talk about cooking with lentils. Okay, let's, let's do it. Um, okay, so if you, if you or your family has been thinking about joining the Meatless Monday, uh, bandwagon, lentils are a great place to start. Why? That's because lentils are super high in protein, making them a fan favorite of vegetarians and vegans alike. Um, and they can be used in some of your favorite dishes to replace meat, much like the recipe we're going to be demoing today. Um, so lentils are not only high in protein, they're also high in fiber. And fiber is what keeps your gut healthy and can give you that full and satisfied feeling after a meal. They're also high in potassium and minerals such as folate and iron, so they really pack a nutritional punch. So they're a great option. 
All right, so lentils are super mystifying. I, I know, I actually never tried a lentil until I was an adult. Um, I was scared of them, I'm not gonna lie. But once I did try them, I realized, wow, these are really, really tasty. Um, so they can be a little scary, um, but the first thing you wanna know is there's different types of lentils, okay? So depending on if you go to the grocery store and you're looking in the aisle, or maybe you, you pick up a bag of lentils at the food pantry, let's talk about different types of lentils and how you can use them. Um, this is important because it's gonna make a difference in how you use them in the recipe that you're going to be cooking. Okay, so red lentils or yellow lentils, these break down the easiest when you cook them, which is going to give them that creamier texture, and it's going to make them great for stews and curry dishes. A lot of Indian and Middle Eastern dishes use these red lentils because it can give that kind of creamy texture. So if, also if you're making a soup and you want it to be a little bit more creamy, you can use these red lentils for that. Um, the brown and green lentils. They're the more traditional lentils that you see. They break down to a lesser extent, but they still do break down, but they leave kind of like a chewy or hearty texture, which makes them a great substitute for sauces like spaghetti sauce, uh, tacos, so that like using them in, in place of meat in a taco filling. You can make burgers out of them. You could put them in casseroles because they have that nice chewy texture that will give you kind of like that meat-like kind of satisfaction when you're eating it. Um, and then of course, this is actually, these are black lentils, these were canned. So these are already cooked as opposed to these which were dry. Black and French green lentils hold their shape very well, which you can see here um, as it being canned, they're perfectly intact. Um, so they're gonna break down the least amount and they're gonna be much firmer, which makes them a great side dish or in addition to a salad, but they're gonna be that kind of like the chewiest. And one thing I think that we can point out about lentils is while they have sort of very similar nutrition to other beans, they cook much more quickly. Um, like you mentioned, the, the red ones cook, cook the fastest, but they don't need to be soaked ahead of time. And they, they cook much more quickly than a lot of, uh, a lot of beans. Um, we're gonna post the link to the recipe. I wanted to mention the link to the recipe that you're gonna prepare, but I also wanted to mention that the recipe that we're gonna post shows like the full long version. And we're gonna actually show two different ways of doing like an ultra fast, low equipment version of the recipe. So I hope that what Amy shared is gonna make lentils a little less scary because we know about that bag of lentils in the back of your pantry that's been sitting there for a long time and maybe it's time to use them. Uh, real quick before Amy gets started on the cooking, uh, if you've just joined us, please introduce yourself in the chat with your uh, county if you're in Maryland or your city and state if you're outside of Maryland and, and post uh, questions and comments. <clears throat> All right. Should I go ahead and get started? Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about cooking lentils. Since this is a college friendly Facebook Live, I actually microwaved my lentils, um, which is something you can do. If you don't feel like turning on the stove, you can microwave them. All you need is a microwave safe dish like this. Um, the conversions, I think we're going to pop in the chat, but it's about one cup of lentils to one and a half cups of water. You just stick the water right in the bowl, pop it in the microwave. This took about 13 to 14 minutes, but really what you're looking for is for the water um, to have soaked through and for the lentils to be tender to the touch. So you don't really want that reservoir of water. If you still have some water left in, pop it back in for a minute or two until the water is all, um, has all evaporated or been soaked up by the lentils, okay? Um, if you use the traditional stove top, you're gonna use a cup of lentils to three cups of water or broth, and then you can simmer it it takes, uh, depending on what type of lentil you use, uh, between 15 and 30 minutes. The 15 minutes for the red lentils, the yellow lentils, and then of course, the lentils that are um, a little bit, will take a little bit longer to break down. The black lentils and the French green are gonna be closer to 30 minutes. Like Krista said, you don't need to soak these like you do with dried beans. They're ready to go, but you do need to rinse them off. Um, they can have debris or dirt um, in the bag. So just make sure you give them a quick rinse before you use them. All right, for our recipe, we're gonna start by cutting up some vegetables. We have carrots, we, oops, we have green peppers, we have carrots and we have onions. You wanna dice them up, how, how um, little the pieces is up to you. It depends on if you want kind of more of a chunky texture or not. Um, while you're cutting up your vegetables, 
you can pop your potato in the microwave. So make sure you wash off and scrub your potato, clean it off. I like to cook mine in the microwave because I'm pretty impatient. I don't like to throw it in the oven, which would take upwards of an hour. All you need to do is poke uh, the, make some holes with a fork to vent the potato before you put it in the microwave. You want to pop it in for between seven and 10 minutes. This guy took about seven minutes to cook. Depending on your potato, it could take upward of 10 minutes. So while that's in the microwave, you can be chopping your vegetables. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and throw these in the pot. And while they're cooking, I wanna see what Luke is up to. And I wanna know all about that college friendly version of the vegetarian Sloppy Joe. Yes, well, thank you, Amy. So we have a, <laughs> Amy has a very simplified version, but we have a very, very simplified version. Um, so all of the uh, ingredients that I have are available at the food share to use. So everything that we I'm using here, you can come and you can get at the food share. Um, so this is a very practical resource for everybody to use. So here um, I have some rice that is left over, but we also have microwavable rice and bagged rice at the food share uh, that you can use. So I'm gonna pop that into the microwave. Um, you can use any carbohydrate you want. You can use a potato like Amy. You can use pasta if you want. You can use some bread. Um, you can have no carbohydrate at all if that's what you would prefer. Um, just, but just the options are endless. I just chose rice because that's one that I really like. And then I have my lentils that I got in a can here uh, that I put in this cup and I rinsed them off as Amy said and make sure they were clean. And then I also have my sloppy joe uh, mixture. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix these two together um, on in a micro -safe, microwave safe uh, dish or bowl. Um, I'm gonna use a plate uh, just because that's my preference. So you'll see me mixing them together here. And so I'll go ahead and mix these up. I'll microwave my rice, and then I will uh, microwave this uh, for about 90 seconds. I'll stir it, and I'll microwave it again for another 90 seconds, and then we should be uh, good to go and plate it. Yeah, that's great. So I love. So this is our recipe for doing sort of a, a homemade sloppy Joe, um, you know, sauce using the the vegetables, and that's wonderful. And we, you know, it's a great cooking experience. But if you can dress those lentils with something that you have available and the pantry does have that sloppy joe sauce, that's still getting some great nutrition and with those lentils. And uh, Luke, if you wouldn't mind uh, just telling us what are the, what's the, the sum total of the tools that you're using to make your version? Yeah, so I am, I hear noise, that's the microwave in the background. <laughs> um, I am using rice leftover, but again, you can use microwavable rice. I am using a can of lentils can of sloppy joe sauce. I used a jar that I put the lentils in after I rinsed them off, um, but you could use the can or just, you know, whatever. And then I'm gonna use this plate where I'm mixing the sloppy joe sauce together um, with the lentils. And then there's the rice that's done. And then I'm gonna put a plate over the um, lentils and sloppy joe mix just so it doesn't splatter over the microwave. And then I have the rice on a plate and then I'll mix them all together. And, and then I can't remember. Can I use a can opener for uh, the sloppy joe mixture. But if and you have one with a pull tab, then you wouldn't need a can opener. And I think you mentioned that you have uh, microwave safe dishes and can openers available at the food share? Yes, we do. So for your like 10 items per week, if you you know need a can opener or you need a pot or whatever it is, or microwave safe bowl, um, we have things like that at the food share and that can be one of your items at a certain week. So we even have that available too, not just the food. I think that's great. I, I really love hearing about organizations that are sort of holistically anticipating the needs of the population that they serve. So great. Okay, well, we're gonna go back to Amy and we're gonna see how her slightly uh, more sophisticated cooking version of the Sloppy Joe's is going. Oh, you're mute, muted, Amy. Oh, technology. Okay, as you can see, um, I've got my vegetables cooking here. Um, what I didn't show you is that I added two tablespoons of oil. I'll, uh, you can use olive oil, you can use vegetable oil, whatever it is you have. Um, so while that's cooking, let's talk about the other ingredients in our Sloppy Joe. So we're gonna be making Sloppy Joe sauce. And to make the Sloppy Joe sauce, um, I've got here, Let's see. So I've got uh, brown sugar, 
garlic powder and chili powder. So those are the three spices I'm gonna be putting in. I'm also gonna be adding two tablespoons, or sorry, one tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce. So it's one tablespoon of brown sugar, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon of chili powder. All right, as this is cooking, this is getting nice and warm now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add the magic ingredient, which is tomato sauce, or uh, tomato, yeah, tomato sauce. So let's go ahead and add that. Is that sauce or paste? I'm actually using paste. Um, but if you want, if this is what you have, I actually have paste. I'm going to be adding a little bit of water to loosen it up. Okay. Yeah. And that's, again, another substitution you can make depending what you have. And probably both of those ingredients are ones that pantries may have available, um, but use whichever one you have. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to add in my soy sauce. And while you're doing that, we have a question. Would frozen onions and peppers work well in this dish? Oh, yes. If you're doing anything, if you're cooking, uh, you can use frozen. Um, the difference is going to be the frozen, it's not going to hold that crunch. It's going to be more of like the cooked uh, texture where it's going to be soft. So anything that you're using where you're, um, you're cooking, you can use that, the frozen uh, onions or green peppers. All right, let's add our cooked lentils. Oh, got a lot of things going on here. I'm just gonna add some cooked lentils. Sorry, guys. <laughs> add some of my lentils in. And there we have it. I'm just gonna add a couple of tablespoons of water just to loosen it up um, to make it more of that sloppy dough, kind of more of a, just a looser texture. Yeah, and you can definitely see like you were talking about the, the texture element of the, the lentils because they kind of hold your shape and have that sort of, um, yeah, the chewiness that you want in the sloppy joe. Yeah, so um, let's see, Luke, let's see what yours looks like. Did you plate yours up? I, it's, I just stirred it about uh, 30 seconds ago, or four, 45 seconds ago, has 45 seconds left. So I microwaved it 90 seconds, stirred it, microwave, I'm microwaving it another 90 seconds now. Um, and so then I'll plate it, I already have the rice heated up, and then I'll mix it together and I'll show everybody my product. And I also want to mention that the food share is actually um, expanding as we go into the future. And we actually just recently got a refrigerator within the last month. And so things like the green peppers and the onions and the carrots that Amy has, uh, hopefully going forward, um, the food share is going to start stocking fresh produce like that. Um, so even those type of fresh vegetables are going to be available to you at the future. But even like right now, we do have like canned carrots that you can have that you could add to this dish as well that is available at the food share as we speak. Great. Well, we love talking about swap opportunities and getting folks confident in, in, in making those exchanges. Um, in recipes to improve, to, you know, cook with what they have and build their skills as a cook. So actually, while you guys are finishing up and plating your final dishes, we're going to pull up um, a list of our upcoming Facebook Live sessions. All right, so we're going to continue at, on Thursdays at 11 a.m. So next week, we're talking about tomatoes, which in my mind are sort of the, you know, crown jewel of the summer garden. Uh, you usually plant tomatoes in Maryland around the beginning of May. So we'll, we'll do a tutorial on planting tomatoes. Our focus is gonna be planting them in containers, um, you know, cause we know not everybody has outdoor space that they can grow in uh, and talking about cooking with fresh tomatoes. We're gonna do another sort of gardening experiment with celery on the 22nd. And then we're gonna have a really exciting school garden highlight on uh, April 29th, showcasing a school garden. I think now more than ever, schools for their in-person students are really focusing on opportunities to get kids outside. And what a better way to combine the health benefits of being outside, 
getting physical activity. It's great for your mental health and then also growing some healthy food in school gardens. Um, like our Facebook page, internal notifications to get reminders to join this broadcast. So if you're watching us live, uh, make sure you're, you're turning on notifications for future broadcasts. Um, or if you're watching this recorded on YouTube, you can um, see the check, catch the next one live. Um, and then last but not least, let's look at our, um, our social media and our, our internet contacts. So we have a new website, our Eat Smart website, which is where we house all of the wonderful recipes and a million more, well, not a million, a lot more that we uh, showcase on Facebook Live um, is our Eat Smart website. So the link to that, go.umd.edu slash Eat Smart. Um, great recipe finding tool. We've got pictures with recipes now. Uh, we're working on getting them all with pictures, but a lot of them have pictures, which I think is really helpful in, um, in motivating you to make a delicious recipe. Our Facebook page is there as well as our YouTube. We do post these recorded versions on YouTube. Um, and then there's our email address. If you have one information about SNAP Ed, school meals, or other food resources, or if you have ideas of Facebook Live presentations that you would like to see in the future, please share them with us uh, so that we can make these as useful as possible. So let's go back to Amy and Luke and see what they cooked up for us. All right, so Amy, let's see. We can show your... So, yeah, I um, added a little bit of uh, light sour cream to the top of mine and stuffed my potato with our lentil sloppy joe. That looks delicious <laughs> and satisfying and belly flowing. Very satisfying, <laughs> yeah. Plain yogurt in place of that sour cream. But man, that really looks like a satisfying meal. And, and I mean, lentils, in addition to being uh, so good for you, they're also really inexpensive. So that is a, a very inexpensive meal to put together. And then Luke, let's see how your simplified version looks. Yes, so I got some rice and then I put the lentils over the rice and then, you know, you can mix it up to your desirability, but I left it like this just to make it look prettier. Um, but it looks very delicious. It does look delicious. That is, again, satisfying. You've got protein, you've got some carbohydrates for energy and you've got a lot of flavor there. So this is really exciting. I love when we're able to get, you know, folks get cooking along with us and share and have our partners involved. Um, thanks to everybody who joined us and um, please uh, follow our Facebook page and join us back here next week at 11 o'clock so for more great information on making the most of foods from your garden. Bye. <laughs>